The fallout from the Elon Musk and Twitter release of the Twitter files continues. As conservatives on Capitol Hill have begun demanding answers and calling for hearings when Republicans take control of the House of Representatives beginning January the 3rd. Of particular concern will be the role that government agencies may have played in encouraging Twitter to suppress speech on its platform. With me now to talk about this and much more, Congressman Michael Cloudy serves on the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. He represents the 27th Congressional District of the Lone Star State. Congressman Cloud, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Good to be with you once again. Now, I know you are tracking this very closely with over being on the Government Oversight Committee. Your reaction to the continuing revelations from Twitter? Wow. Well, you know, they said it was a conspiracy theory at first, but it's it's amazing to see just uh, all the evidence coming out now that indeed uh, viewpoints were censored and it was very biased uh, and what's especially troubling and you mentioned it is the potential collaboration with the uh, federal government and and uh, agencies to really squelch speech and, and to put weight in a particular narrative that now we know was actually misinformation uh, and, and so it's very troubling very troubling to see what's happening uh, thankfully it's coming out finally long last uh, but it's something that we will definitely be spending some time on as we head into the majority in the oversight committee Will you go beyond Twitter? I mean, obviously, this appears to be, I say obviously, it, it appears obvious to me that this is a pattern that we're seeing not just from Twitter, but from all of those in big tech. Will you be able to go further than that and, and delve into how the social media platforms, which have become by default the public square of conversation, mm -hmm. will you be able to look at all of them? Yeah, hopefully we will be. Obviously, it helps that Twitter is being honest and open now about what uh, had been done uh, previous to Elon uh, purchasing Twitter. Uh, and, and so I'm not sure if Meta and Facebook is going to be as transparent and forthcoming. Hopefully they will. It, it's it's very troubling that, that this kind of thing would be allowed in these platforms. Hopefully we'll come back to the point. Like, if you have to put this kind of... Uh, misinformation out there if you have to i mean you got to question your own ideologies if this is what it takes to protect your belief and uh it, it's very very concerning you know it has to do with an ideology that is uh just put aside uh truth and what that might mean and and have embraced relative quote truth and uh what that empowers people to do in the sense of the kind of corruption that we've seen uh, in this in this space is very troubling. Uh, we're going to bring light to it, and uh, especially as I mentioned, how how the heavy hand of government may have played a role in this. It'll be interesting to see to, to see too. You know, some of the COVID information that that mm -hmm. came out, and whether you know some of the big pharma companies played a role in that too, or the CDC, or you know. So uh, I feel like we're at the beginning of this conversation, and that there's much more that's going to come out about this, and and we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that and, and, and doing our own investigations as we continue to go forward. Yeah, we'll be keeping a very close eye on, on uh, this as it unfolds, because I believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Congressman, I want to switch no, gears a little bit. Today, you were a part of a press conference with about 20 uh, House Republicans dealing with the issue of the mm -hmm. crisis at the border. I was talking about how uh, the Democrats can multitask. They can uh, work on an omnibus that would fund their priorities into the next Congress. They can uh, block information from coming out that the Republicans are seeking, and they can also mm -hmm. continue the mess at the southern border. Um, record yeah. numbers coming across. You are, uh, you're saying something's going to happen in the next Congress. Oh, yeah, something's definitely got to happen. We had a hearing today on impeaching Mayorkas. It's something we've been calling for for quite some time. And it's not just because, oh, we don't like the policies, but they are not only upholding the law, they are doing everything they can to work against the state of law. Uh, you know, the law defines what operational control of the border is supposed to look like. And Mayorkas not only has lied to the American people, he's become come before Congress and said we have operational control of the border when the very definition we are doing exactly the opposite. And not only is it just negligence, it's very intentional. The apparatus that they're putting in place to aid and abet cartels uh, at the southern border. And so 
he'll definitely be held to account. One of the things we're looking into, uh, and and certainly from an oversight perspective, we'll be able to get into. You know, every everybody understands the the tragic results of the fentanyl that's coming across the border, the human trafficking that's coming across the border, because, you know, we think about the lives that are affected by that. But one of the interesting things from an oversight perspective will be how the taxpayer dollars being used in this new multi-billion dollar trafficking industry. And many of them going, we're talking $100 million contracts and more going to to single source, no bid contracts that, that seem to be going to uh, out as political favors in a sense to political donors and and you know so the corruption in this uh is is going to be just as devastating as the human impact as well uh, as we begin in, to dig into what's going on and, and congressman cloud as you as you stated th this isn't just being negligent this has to be intentional i mean when you look at the fact that under my orcas four million illegal immigrants have been encountered at our southern border i mean the mm -hmm. one to two million illegal immigrants have been released into our nation's interior. Uh, and this doesn't count yeah. the ones that got away. These are just the ones that they encountered. And they've also, as you mentioned, exactly. fentanyl, 24,000 pounds of fentanyl has been, uh, has been uh, seized. That doesn't mm -hmm. even begin to touch with what got touch on the amount they got through. Well, it, exactly. Whether we're talking humans or whether we're talking the drugs, you, you make the important point. There's the, the apprehensions or the encounters, then there's the known gotaways, what we know is slipping through the cracks, and then there's the unknown gotaways, what we don't even know is happening. But we certainly see the effects of it uh, in the press conference we had today. I talked about the fact that, you know, it, almost every other day I'm getting a text from a, a sheriff in, in my district who's you know, it's it's another bailout or we stumbled upon another stash house where these young men and women are being uh, abused or come across a fentanyl seizure uh, in, in our communities here in the United States. I got a text message today from my son's school that basically said the school is going on to a, a lockdown because we got a message from our sheriff's department saying there's illegal aliens out on the loose because of bailout, they might be armed and dangerous. And so this is affecting the communities because this administration refuses, absolutely refuses to uh, secure the border. And uh, it, they're, they're breaking the law. They have no care or concern about the communities affected. Let, let me very quickly, we're almost out of time, ask you this question. And, and you're part of the Freedom Caucus. We've, you're, you're the conservative wing of the Republicans. Um, are we going to hold, I mean, we only got one chamber. Only, you'll only have the House. Will you be able to mm -hmm. hold the line and force the Democrats to come along on some of these things? Well, you know, and, and that's the big question in some of the conversations we're having about the in, inner structure of what we need to do as a Congress to make Congress work better and to help us represent the people better. We certainly need to have a conference who cares enough about the direction of this country to hold the line on some of the stuff uh, that's going on. And, and it's going to mean saying no when it comes to some of these spending things uh, and, and really fighting hard. Uh, and, and just saying we're not going to be willing to fund the demise of our country. We're going to stand strong on these things and reverse course for our country. You know, I, I've said it before among a number of members as we're having these debates. I'm not interested in being a part of a managed decline of our country. Right. I want us to reverse course and restore the foundation this country was built upon. Well, you have a lot of folks. You have a lot of folks across the country cheering you on to do just that. Congressman Michael Cloud, always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much. God bless.